And when I have the green light, Okay. All right. Um, so thank you guys for, for having me. Um, my name is, is Tony Lopez. I am the Vice President of Pride Industries Manufacturing and Logistics Service Division. Really quickly, just a, a little bit about myself. I've been with the organization for, for 24 years. I've been in all facets of operations from production, um, in, in inventory control, engineering, account management, you name it, I've, I've touched it. I've uh, been in the capacity of vice president for the last six and a half, almost seven years, overseeing our manufacturing logistics services, which includes electronics manufacturing, supply chain logistics, and contract packaging fulfillment. So today I was hoping to kind of give you a high level overview of uh, the company itself, and then spend a little bit more time with the capabilities that we offer. So Pride Industries was founded in the basement of a church in 1966 by a group of parents with adult age children with disabilities and wanting what a lot of us take for granted. And that is uh, gainful employment and the dignity that comes with earning a paycheck. Uh, these parents early on uh, established this nonprofit organization, operated for a good 20 plus years. As uh, most nonprofits, everything was hand to mouth. And in about the mid 80s, decided that if this was going to be a sustainable organization, we needed to change our model. So we quickly uh, brought in a new dynamic president and CEO, Mr. Michael Ziegler, who led the organization since the mid 80s for uh, 37 years until his passing in, in 2020. Um, we also decided to get a new board of directors in, and that really pushed the um, concept of operating like a for-profit organization. And that's when we shifted into what we coin uh, social enterprise. And so we are a social enterprise organization. And what that means is we employ the same type of commercial strategies that our competition does just at the end of the day instead of uh, putting the profits into the pockets of shareholders, we go back and reinvest in the mission of the organization, which is to create more employment for people with disabilities. So the service lines and everything that we do, I'll cover here shortly, but we love to kind of use that tagline where we deliver business excellence with a, a positive social impact. Today, Pride Industries operates in 16 different states and Washington, DC. We are currently the leading employer of people with disabilities in the nation. Uh, like I said, we stop, started in Auburn, California. For those that don't know Northern California too well, it's about 40 minutes north of Sacramento. And um, from there, we kind of quickly started working with the federal government at a uh, Air Force base here in Northern California and also with Hewlett Packard. Uh, that opened up the door for us to start working on government contracts. That's really what's taken us outside of the state of California and into other uh, metros. And while we generate as an organi organization a little over 400 million top line in revenue, uh, the, the more important stats for us are the people we employ. So at present, it's about 5,800 individuals. And of that number, more than 50% have some form of a disability. For the last 50 plus years, uh, we have focused on individuals with disabilities, and that term is, is wide reaching. That includes in, um, in intellectual disabilities, it could be physical disabilities, it could be mental health and learning disorders. Uh, a lot of times people focus on individuals that are born with a disability, but don't really focus on through the course of someone's lifetime, they could develop through a traumatic uh, incident in their life, they have some type of disability from that. So we have been very successful uh, populating and serving close to 50% of the, the workforce at Pride Industries. Uh, we started to branch out into other uh, demographics or other um, groups that have barriers to employment. And that really has been service disabled veterans, former uh, foster youth and former trafficking survivors. 
So how do we accomplish our mission? So we've essentially got three different verticals and services that we offer as an organization. I'll spend a lot of time within my sector, which is manufacturing and logistics. And then we also have the, the middle there you see, which is faci uh, facilities maintenance and services. And uh, that is both federal and commercial facing. And then we have this new line of business we spun up in the last 18 months, which is inclusive talent solutions. Um, organizations that are looking to an alternative workforce strategy, looking to reach their diversity and inclusion goals are trying to figure out how do we attract the workforce that's different than we've normally done in the past. Uh, today, we have approximately 30 million people of working age that have a disability in the US. And of that number, 75% of them are unemployed. So that is a uh, very large uh, workforce that if we're able to tap into correctly, we can help organizations across the US. The Inclusive Talent Solutions is responsible for going out, partnering with communities, partnering with companies, assessing their work environments, provided training, and ultimately job placement of people with disabilities within their organizations. So spending a little bit of time and energy within the manufacturing and logistics service division, we'll start first with our electronics manufacturing group. We traditionally offer printed circuit board assemblies, cables, cable harness assembly, uh, electromechanical builds, uh, full system integration where we build the entire units, um, catering to a lot of different markets, the biggest one being medical devices and very recently here, aerospace and defense. Um, we are actively courting three of the largest um, prime contractors in the, the world to provide some services to the federal government. Um, from a medical device perspective, we uh, currently manufacture three class two medical devices. One of those devices is a sports therapy and rapid recovery system. It is currently used by every major sports team in America. In addition to those core competencies, we also offer some other wraparound services like um, uh, prototyping and engineering. We've got uh, 10 degree engineers on staff that are responsible for uh, process engineering, uh, electrical, electrical mechanical engineering, a variety of, of disciplines supporting the needs of, of this particular line of business. In addition to those core competencies and wraparound services, uh, we also do a little bit of repair, refurbishment, and reverse logistics as well. Supply chain management and uh, logistics. We have a very strong relationship with uh, the largest customer in this space would be Hewlett Packard Inc. Any ink jets, laser jets, 3D graphic press that needs a replacement component in North or South America comes from Pride Industries. We also do some uh, field returns and repair for, for this organization as well. We've got um, a very strong strategic um, procurement group that's responsible for strategic sourcing. In some cases, we, we purchase and own the inventory outright. In others, it's consigned to us and we simply um, ship out to their particular fulfillment orders. It just really depends on the nature of the requirement and how we go about uh, providing services. We operate on a tier one ERP system called LN. Um, it's a product of N4. Uh, there's basically three top tier players. There's Oracle, SAP, and N4. N4 kind of gobbled up some of the smaller players and took the best in, uh, in practice and created their LN solution. So whether it is serialization, uh, lot inventory control, um, RFID support, we can offer any of those services depending on the nature of the requirement. We also can provide uh, a lot of um, um, EDI interface. So depending on the, the volume of activity, the transactions that our customer wants to see, we can come up with a customizable systematic solution to meet their unique business needs. The last line of business under manufacturing is our contract packaging and fulfillment operation. Uh, in this space, we cater a lot to the consumer package good space, where a lot of those packaging requirements are going out to retail stores or the big box stores you see across the US. Um, 
We do a, a lot of order fulfillment, uh, ranging from small to medium sized companies all the way up to Fortune 100. A lot of times it's project based or perhaps their, their current provider can't meet the demand needs um, that they need to, to get a project out the door. Our value proposition is in this space is we can activate up to seven different facilities in um, Northern California and now Southern California to aid in a single project. So we can have upwards of 1400 people working on a project, move material relatively easily across the state to quickly get the customer's needs met. Uh, this also allows us to do some both in, um, in, in the US as well as international shipping uh, because of the relationships we have with companies like Hewlett Packard, we've gotten great uh, shipping rates, uh, brokers, domestic, uh, international, all the above um, that we can offer to customers as well. So this is a small subset of, of some of the customers that we support ranging from large cybersecurity companies to large techni uh, technology companies like, like Apple, um, Hewlett Packard you see on there. Uh, Compass Foods is a great example of where we are providing labor solutions out within the US to their locales across the, the nation. Uh, at present, they are contracted with Pride Industries to place approximately 5,000 people over the next two and a half years at their buildings across the US uh, performing work in their hospitality or, or food catering services. So that's an example of a solution under um, um, inclusive talent solutions for placing people out in the community versus what I typically do, bring people in to manufacture products. Talked a little bit about some of the, the industries that we support. Uh, I talked about the newest one there, the aerospace and defense, and uh, very soon the government. Um, outside of manufacturing and logistics, we do uh, facility services catering to the federal government, commercial contracts for the state of California. We do all of the preventative maintenance and uh, custodial services for the office of the courts, uh, all of the California court systems up and down the state we're providing services to. We also do airports. If you guys are lucky enough to fly out our way towards Sacramento, the Sacramento airport in Terminal B is um, managed, cleaned, supported by Pride Industries out there. And uh, we also do a lot within military installations. Largest one I think currently is Fort Bliss, which is in El Paso, Texas. We do all of their um, facility services. Think of us almost like a public works contract where we're performing what a soldier will not do his or herself. Pride is contracted to do. Um, from a cleaning perspective, I think the last count square footage is over almost 2 million square feet that we clean across the US in uh, multiple buildings, depending on whether it's a federal customer requirement. I think one of the things that sets us apart is we are very customer centric. Uh, a lot of companies can meet a uh, customer statement of work. It's very transactional and that's okay. Uh, we like to have that strategic partnership. We want to create value for our customers. We wanna be an extension of our customer. Uh, this quote that you see flashed on the screen here is something that we got from one of our uh, quarterly business reviews with HP. Um, that proactiveness that they called out of being a proactive partner who exceeds their performance targets. Uh, a great case in point is when we first got this contract uh, from HP, the first 12 months of performance, we were able to exceed all of their key performance indicator ratings and did it with about half as much inventory on hand. So we constantly look at ways to be best in industry and provide that value back to the customer. And so they, they love to acknowledge our, our services and, and pass on these, these quotes of being in love with the mission of the organization, but ultimately the performance is the really big driver for them. So I talked a little bit about the inclusive talent solutions where we're, we're hiring on behalf of companies across the US um, we do that again through, through trainings, through, through assessments, through recruiting and placements. Uh, a, a great example I like to share 
is um, our contract. We do four or five here in Northern California with casino resorts. Um, the largest one in our area is Thunder Valley Casino. And it took us a while to, to get them to understand the benefits of employing people with disabilities. Uh, the culture has significantly improved from, from their vantage point, but the, the sustainable outputs, the ability to meet their, their requirements uh, were such a, a large benefit for them that uh, beyond just the housekeeping, they gave us an opportunity to manage their complete laundry operation. And so uh, at present, we have over 30 individuals out at this casino location, and they're able to process over a thousand pounds of, of laundry an hour uh, through their, their uh, efforts. So um, not only from a cultural shift perspective, but there's been a lot of focus over the last maybe two years on ESG. Uh, if you guys haven't heard that, that acronym, it stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. They are non-financial factors that financial, financial institutions and investors are using to evaluate credit worthiness, uh, investment worthiness for organizations. And statistically, those organizations that have higher ESG read, ratings have better culture, have better productivity, and have better performance overall. So Pride likes to say we're the, we're the S in that ESG equation. So companies are, are seeing that benefits, wanting to increase that, that score so they can see the internal benefits and the external benefits as well. Also from a consumer perspective, that's a huge um, um, benefit for them as well, where consumers statistically are willing to pay upwards of 20% more uh, at, the, at the stores, knowing there's a strong social mission behind the organization. So there's, there's that benefit for organizations as well in, in contracting with companies like, like Pride Industries. So here's a, a quick little snapshot of, of some of the awards that, that we've won. I think uh, the first one you see up there is probably one of my favorites. Um, we've had the Hewlett Packard contract for close to 22 years now. And of their 400 plus suppliers that they operate across the globe, Pride Industries was chosen as their global service supplier of the year. It had nothing to do with being a diversity partner. It had everything to do with business alignment, uh, value created. And so I, didn't, I wasn't able to go get that award, but my predecessor, when he took the stage, was between Flextronics and D, uh, DHL. And as he's walking up to, to receive it, he's hearing them say, who, who is Pride Industries? And, and how did they get this award and beat us out of this space? Uh, it's not uncommon for us to be a little bit of a disruptor in the markets that we serve. Um, we find value in that as well. It's being able to customize solutions to, to meet the needs of our customers' unique business needs. That doesn't always happen um, when you look at large-scale providers in, in our spaces. You kind of have to be a little bit cookie cutter. They don't want to deviate a whole bunch from, from their current processes. And that's really the, where pride comes into play and adds value. Some of the other things you see there flashed on the screen, uh, Safer Choice Award for a couple years in a row. We have a um, Pride product called Pride Clean that we operate in the cleaning industry that we sell uh, through the broker market. We were awarded that uh, award, I think two or three years in a row. We've seen a lot of uh, um, recognition because we do in fact employ uh, service disabled veterans. That's been a big, benefits of, uh, of Pride, partnering with Pride. And the last one you see on that list is, is actually brand new. Um, we, we just got this uh, this last year. It's the Global Surface Mount Technology and Packaging Award for Manufacturing Excellence for a company of our size. And again, that was something that we were recognized. Uh, I think we're, it was in Germany, we were given the award for a company offering our solutions at a competitive rate, great high quality and a reasonable turnaround time. So we have to compete head to head. We never go into the market space looking to say we're looking to employ people with disabilities. That sometimes is the icing on the cake. We have to compete head to head with what most customers want. And that's again, competitive rate, 
great turnaround time and, and high quality. So uh, I, I love to kind of close on this before I open it up for, for questions. This is our, our previous president and CEO, uh, Mike Ziegler. And um, one of the, the most dynamic CEO cheerleaders I've, I've had ever, ever had the opportunity to meet, um, not only for this company, but for advocacy of people with disabilities across the, the nation. So um, it, it truly is, you're, you're changing someone's life that wouldn't otherwise have an opportunity. Uh, it's not uncommon for in, employees when we do traveling across the US to stop us and tell us what the impact of working for Pride has done. Uh, a great example is an employee that started with us maybe four and a half, five years ago, very introverted. Parents weren't quite sure what the outcomes were for, for their child. Fast forward to, to where we are today, and every time I lead a tour, she wants to stop and talk about what she's doing, what the company has done for her, her life. In one of the tours, she stopped us and held up her very first cell phone bill and said, um, without Pride Industries, I wouldn't have been able to get my own cell phone bill and pay for it myself. And by the way, I'm working to find a roommate so I can move out on my own. So the, the, the dignity of a paycheck, uh, what it brings along with it, the self-respect, uh, the power of perfect purpose is a, an amazing thing. And so um, never want to forget what this individual here did for the organization. His DNA is firmly imprinted in uh, the executive team uh, that carried on with our new president and CEO, Jeff Dern. Um, he, he loves to say what Mike used to say, that pride is a, car, car, a complex carbohydrate because of all the different services that we offer. But the biggest telltale sign is people, once they come here, it's hard to walk away. Um, there's a reason people stay for so long. It's the culture of the organization. It's the, the value that we're creating for not only our customers, but also our community by the people we place. So I'm super privileged and proud to, to do what I do and, and talk about the great work that we do for uh, customers across the U.S., as well as the job creation. At present, we've got a, a big, hairy, audacious goal of trying to move that number. You, you saw earlier about 3,500 people with disabilities. And our goal is to figure out how to get to 100,000 people served through Pride Industries. So um, that's a big gap that we have to fill. But in partnership with companies across the, the US, we believe that is absolutely realistic knowing that there's 30 million people of working age out there, that's a small drop in the bucket. We've got a ways to go even beyond that, but we're, we're striving to move forward with that number. And we've got people like, like Jeff Dern, myself, uh, Brian Garbark, uh, that, are, that are championing uh, the mission of the organization, uh, advocating what we can do in our industries and what it does to the community by hiring people with disabilities. So I know I, I rattled through that really quickly. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that I at least touched on the, the high points of, of who we are as an organization, uh, the, the services that we offer, uh, specifically in, in the manufacturing and supply chain space, because that's my area of, of expertise. And then really not knowing a whole bunch about you guys, this is my first time getting a chance to talk with you, what, what your pain points are, what are the things that you are looking at, I'm sure I'm not immune in, in the supply chain disruption that uh, everybody's seen with, with materials across uh, the globe, uh, the workforce challenges that we've seen uh, because of this pandemic. Um, we're, we're trying to figure out ways through that. Again, having this large population of uh, individuals willing to work has been helpful, but it is certainly still a problem for us to, to find the right uh, candidates to fill positions in the last um, maybe year and a half in particular. So um, hopefully a lot of what it is that we do resonates with you uh, and your teams. I'd, I'd love to hear kind of um, your guys' thoughts if you have any questions about the organization, uh, areas of our focus, or, or things maybe that I hadn't touched on that you heard about and would like me to. 
I'd love to open up the, the floor to, to you guys. Hey, Tony, Brian here, um, the VP of the local chapter. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, for those of us who might consider people uh, who could reach out to you and be placed or, or work with you, uh, how, how does that generally work? Um, um, you know, for just people who are interested in, in, in being a part of Pride Industries in that, that capacity. Yeah, great question. So typically what I do is I give Brian Garbark's personal phone number, email address, <laughs> address. Yeah, um, the, the, I would direct your teams to our website, prideindustries.com. Uh, they could also reach out to, to Brian uh, Garbark or myself uh, through email, um, uh, tony.lopez, L-O-P-E-Z, at prideindustries.com. And then uh, Brian's is going to be the same, brian.garbark at prideindustries.com. Um, we could help direct traffic to see how we can meet your, your company's needs. If you had just general questions about how do you tap into this particular workforce, we can connect you with the right people. Um, there's also questions we get about, well, I have a friend, neighbor, family member that has a disability. How do I connect them with a company like Pride Industries? Same thing, we can certainly do the connection through Brian or myself. Um, I would also let you know that we've recently spun up a uh, 800 line for individuals with disabilities to contact. I believe it's 844-I-AM-ABLE. Uh, uh, individuals can contact that number. They're connected with a Pride Industries representative. They'll ask some questions and they'll get that individual going in the right direction for um, um, employment, um, but within their particular areas. Great, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, I am also moderating the chat and uh, Josie asks, could you please talk about the process to select employees and match them to the job? Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming individuals with disabilities. Great question. Um, so it's it's basically they come to us with a preset set of skills, and we've got um, we call them case managers, and then bolted onto our production personnel. They do assessments. What are they currently able to to do as far as uh, skills and activities, and where do they want to go? And then how do we develop those skills to get them there eventually? So we create a almost like a training plan. It's, it's very customized uh, to those individuals, where they start, what they need to do to develop their skills. And then not only is the case manager or job coach checking in, uh, but they're also uh, partnering with our production personnel. Um, if we haven't placed them yet and we're simply going, we've got a person with disability with a particular skill set and we've got industry that needs the, um, the, the resources, how do we go about that? It's really understanding our customers' needs. Our uh, inclusive talent team is responsible for, for drafting what jobs are open within those particular industries, what skills are individuals looking for, and then what is our current applicant pool able to do? And then that team is responsible for that job matching. And so those are the two ways we, we go, go about doing it. So it's either training, um, assessing, building upon what they do today, and it's also making that match by understanding what our customers' needs are. And it's, um, a, a for, it's a, a, a system that we use today that does kind of that matching. So we're not doing it on spreadsheets or anything, but it allows us to say, we've got candidates that meet your requirements and uh, we, we can go ahead and place. Once they're placed on site, we do spend a lot of time and energy over the next several months to ensure that they become proficient at those tasks. So it's not just placement and we walk away. We want to ensure that it's going to be a benefit to the employee as far as well as the employer. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, I uh, I love hearing that there's a training plan for for each individual. That's that's amazing. Uh, that uh, you know I don't hear very much of that very often. But you don't just drop them off. So. Uh, <laughs> It, well, it's, yeah, so one of the big things that we focus on is our, our assets, and that's our employees, whether they're disabled or non-disabled. Um, our, our job when you're looking at trying to recruit 
you have individuals that are in the labor, in the market looking for really three things. One is obviously the pay. Um, the other is is culture, and the other is career progression. And so if we don't demonstrate that we have a path forward for you, that we can train you in this particular job category. You have the advancement opportunities um, or placement out into the community. Then a lot of times people will jump ship and find another organization that will invest in them as individuals. So we want to make sure that we retain and attract key talent that includes both disabled and non-disabled individuals. Great. I do see another uh, comment here. I mean, a question uh, from uh, Wendy who asks, does Pride connect with workforce investment boards? So that's a great question. I know we've talked in the past. I don't know if we've actually made connection and, and done any kind of partnerships with them. Um, that's under our workforce inclusion team. I'm, I'm not overseeing that, but I do know we spent a lot of time advocating um, with different groups, partnering with different groups. Uh, there's been, even at the school level, workability programs, but I'm not sure specifically if I can give you an example of where we have, in fact, partnered with those boards. And this is and Brian. I can I can jump in and add a little bit of context uh, as well to that, where we are partnering with workforce investment boards, uh, usually on a case by case basis, and we're very open to working more collaboratively collaboratively with workforce development boards um, to make sure that we've got programs that support not only the needs of the individuals we're serving, but the business community at large. And I probably should have said workforce inclusion. That's where Brian lives and plays. So he's well educated in that that vein. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, but just as a comment for everyone on on uh, on the webinar, uh, if you do feel like chiming in, um, you know we don't have to listen to my voice to read out the questions. You you have a uh, uh, full freedom to to jump on in. But I do notice uh, Rachel. Uh, is asking, does Pride Industries partner with employers in the healthcare sector? Yeah, so one of the, the jobs that we're trying to recruit for right now is environmental technicians within the uh, healthcare uh, industry. We've got a couple different contracts with local providers, uh, I think the largest one being Sutter Health. Um, so we, we currently do that. That also has been branched, branched out into uh, hospital housekeeping for the California Department of Corrections as well. Great, 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 great. Yeah, and if anyone else wants to chime in, we, we do still have some time. <laughs> Can I ask you about your uh, background there on, on the propellers uh, or the plane that's behind you? Is that one of the planes uh, from one of the partners uh, that you work with? This is my personal get to work vehicle. Uh, thanks for asking, <laughs> Brian. Uh, no, so so because we do a lot of work with the, the federal government when we are um, out there talking about the organization, we wanted to make sure that it's all about brand awareness. It's also about uh, highlighting the industries we serve. So our marketing team developed around maybe 15 different backgrounds when we started going into the virtual space since the pandemic. And it just, this just happens to be one of them. So, um, so yes, that's, that's the reason we have this. Um, I think we have five or six specifically that have aircraft um, in, in the background. This is the one I like the best. <laughs> Flying with pride, very nice. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Uh, there is a, another question in the uh, in the chat there that says, uh, how is Pride increasing the employment of individuals with disabilities into state government, uh, like the state of California? So it's, it's contract by contract. Uh, so there are some contracts at the state level that we are pursuing. Um, I think the, lar the one that we just got recently is with, uh, with the department at Caltrans. Um, so it depends on the core competencies. If there's something that we can offer, 
whether it be at the federal level or the state level, we'll go and compete against. Um, but we, we typically don't deviate from those towers, the manufacturing, the, the facilities, custodial uh, services um, too much. We recently started looking at uh, solar energy uh, repair there, but um, it hasn't opened up too much. So we've got a couple contracts, state contracts today. Um, uh, one, in fact, I talked about this morning is the California Department of uh, Parks and Rec. We do a lot of their uh, merchandise shipping order fulfillment for, for that contract. So it just kind of depends on the nature of the work. Is it a good fit? Whether we believe we can compete on it. So we've got a, we've got a few of those. Yeah. No, that's good stuff. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> What's been your favorite thing to work? Uh, uh, well, I guess personally, you know, with pride, um, you know, one of the, the bigger accomplishments from, from your tenure there, you know, what, what comes to mind with uh, what you're able to accomplish? Because I know there's a lot. I mean, I'm just fascinated by how much good it feels like you're putting into you know, the workforce, the, the world, there's just a lot of that, you know, social responsibility that it hits on those, uh, uh, you know, points. It's like, yeah, we're doing something good here. Uh, so obviously a lot of what you do is, but is there something that stands out for you that uh, you, you can speak of? So I could, I could share with you uh, the projects I've been affiliated with where we got our certification to, um, ISO 13485, which allows us to, to manufacture in the, the medical space, um, a change in how we go about onboarding new business. Truly the most uh, impactful um, thing that I've been a part of is, is changing people's lives. Um, I can't tell you how much of a big deal that is. And it might not seem like a big deal to, to most, but when you think about uh, today, I think the statistics are about one in five individuals in the U.S. Ha have a disability. That means that you're, you know, a relative, next door neighbor, uh, somebody that you know, and and not quite sure how individuals will be able to be um, self-sustaining over the course of their lifetime. And seeing companies, not just like not just Pride, but other nonprofit organizations, provide the the opportunity to connect. The opportunity to be included in the conversation is a big deal. So the advocacy that we do as an organization on, on uh, accessibility, inclusiveness, um, and to see organizations see the benefit of it, and then the impact it makes on a personal level with a personal disabilities, that's probably the biggest takeaway. Um, I could tell you that that Global Supplier of the Year Award was pretty cool, but ultimately when you see somebody that says, like I said, I, I got my my car because of this company, or I got my cell phone because of this company. That's what keeps me here for 24 years. Yeah, no, I, I, I bet those, um, you know, you hear people of, uh, that have stories of struggle with people who, you know, they're trying to support and don't have the resources or, you know, they're, they're able to work for a little bit, but not long-term or things like that. And, and I think that's what hits me when I heard you say, you work with them, you place them, and you're like, "Hey, we're gonna get you there. This is this is the skill set we assess. We're gonna help you grow." I just I just love hearing that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I I was fortunate enough to be able to do a podcast recently about um, being a thought leader in the manufacturing space, and it turned into a all hands meeting with a company that connected me with an organization. It's an international organization. It's called the Economic World Forum. It's a organization that looks at the, the betterment of the state of the world. And they've got a major initiative right now to look at disability inclusion. And they've carved out a group called the, the Valuable 500. If you've never heard of that before. It's a group of um, 500 global CEOs, companies like Johnson & Johnson, uh, Apple, uh, Tim Cook's on this board, and they're, they're looking at ways to work together and innovate to include people with disabilities in their companies and into the conversation. That podcast that I gave, very locally related, was able to connect the dots and get us at a seat at the table 
to, to speak to people at the economic forum um, to potentially get in front of these 500 uh, high level CEOs to talk about what it is that we do and how we as a, um, um, I mean, the human spirit of this whole thing is big and that's what we need to focus on. And I think we have an opportunity to kind of be at the front line uh, educating these CEOs on how to go about employing people with disabilities successfully. And so that will be a huge benefit uh, to, to pride and employing people with disabilities if we get a chance to, to speak to that 500 group. Wow, nice. Well, I don't know if anyone else has any questions, um, but- I have, a, I have a question. So I work at a community college and I'm looking at your website right now and um, I'm just wondering what kind of certification have you seen for each category? Um, obviously we wanna fit in our students with the capacity that they're currently reaching their goal for certification or going towards um, their AA. So I'm just kind of wondering what the uh, positions are in each category, and I guess we can talk about it later. You shared your email um, address, but I'm just kind of wondering if um, is there any certifications that you've seen in each category, and what those look like. When we're when we're trying to recruit, you mean, or yes, yeah, it just kind of depends on the nature of the business we're operating. Um, great example, I just met with our uh, senior director of talent acquisition for some openings in electronics. Uh, there are certifications in that space that are uh, needed to successfully operate on a production line, assembly line, or a soldering line. Um, if they don't have those certifications, we potentially can start them at a, a different position. And then we have internal trainers that can uh, provide said training and then become certified at a later date. Uh, so it just kind of depends on the nature of the line of business that we're trying to recruit for. Um, some individuals, it does require uh, a college degree, depending on if you're looking at uh, something in a high level management, um, somebody that has an AA degree, somebody that has a four-year degree, certainly um, that's, a, that's a benefit, but uh, there's not like a, a minimum certification or education level for, for you to partner with Pride. So if there was something that your college or community college said, hey, we're graduating a lot of individuals out of these programs, um, you could send me that information on what programs, and I could specifically tell you if we've got any openings in that particular discipline, or if we have an idea about partnership with um, community colleges in the future. Uh, we have a couple here that we partner with locally, uh, mostly with an engineering. Um, we do some internship, internships, we do some uh, actual hires for positions, so it just kind of depends. If you want to send me kind of um, what you're thinking, what uh, what you're working on with your particular community college, I can let you know if that's something we're actively recruiting for. Thank you. So I, I if there's no other questions, uh, I, I applaud you guys for 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 um, what you guys do in this particular space. Uh, I actually was a part of 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 the Apex Group for a while, um, and and trying to get people to understand the complexities of supply chain and, and other things. Uh, it's not always easy to do, and so uh, for you guys to have a platform to one educate one hosts companies to share their stories, their services. And then if there was any synergies between the two, uh, it, it's a great forum for that. So uh, hopefully you guys have uh, a great membership. Um, if there's anything that uh, we can ever do at, at Pride, um, Brian's probably your easiest and closest connection, um, whether that be you know hosting something at, at one of our facilities, talking a little bit more about the, the chapter, um, or maybe even get some more individuals on the chapter. I don't know, but uh, I think what you guys do is very hard and um, I, I appreciate giving us the opportunity to talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. And yeah, no, thank you for those kind words. Uh, we do try and put an effort. We have a lot of events uh, we try and put on uh, and it was just surprising 
when you guys were at our Ballast Point event and how much buzz it generated just by being there and being a topic to converse about. Uh, it, it was just, it's, it's a win-win to get both of our, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess not marketing, but, you know, our names out there to see, be active. And I think, I don't know if everyone on this call agrees, but, um, you know, it's just, it's nice to start reconnecting with people. And I think we're slowly all headed in that direction. And, and it seemed like that at Ballast Point as well. So, uh, you know, I love talking about it. So that's why I volunteer as VP of admin. And we do have events coming up and other, other ways to get involved. If anyone on the call wants to know about that, we have uh, CPIM classes, uh, you know, where we teach instructor led. Uh, there's a part one class coming up tomorrow. Uh, then next week, the CLTD for transportation distribution logistics starts up next week on the 8th. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, sustainability goals and, uh, you know, discussions, webinars about that. There's a program going on. I think it's the third third series in that four part uh, that Preston is leading um, for just the sustainability and supply chain. And if I could just pull up the date, oh my goodness. It's uh, it's also something people can can come and be a part of. Uh, you know, we're just trying to present a lot of things. It's June 7th at, at uh, noon from noon to 1.15 to talk about, uh, you know, score greenhouse gases um, and how, you know, the, our, our industry is affected, impacted and what we can do. So, uh, you know, just glad that you're able to partner with us here. Um, I think there, based on the questions, there's a lot of interest as well still, uh, just like there was at Ballast Point. And I'm sure there's, you know, as we spread the word, the recording that we have going on that we'll share, you know, here as well with all our membership, because uh, that's what our, I think our paying members have access to. Uh, you know, we'll be able to keep spreading that word and, and you know, keep growing and, and benefiting from that. So if anyone else is, uh, you know, wants to say anything, I forgot to check the chat. Uh, we did, uh, the office manager, Amanda, thank you for putting the link there for the events. Um, but with that, I'm not sure if anyone else has anything else. Thank you for, for that, Tony and Brian. And uh, yeah, we, we hope to still interact and uh, work with you in the future. And I do some traveling down you guys' area. Um, so I'll make sure to keep in touch with Brian. Maybe it um, coincides with one of your events. Uh, definitely, if it's going to be at Ballast Point, I'll make sure that happens. Um, so, <laughs> but, uh, but looking forward to, to being actively part of the conversation with you guys uh, in the future as well. So I'll keep in touch with Brian and, and uh, keep me apprised of anything going on in your, your area. Great, great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Brian. And Thanks, that, Brian and Amanda. And for having us we really appreciate the collaboration yeah yeah likewise um and with that i guess we'll uh stop the recording and, and bid everybody a good night enjoy your dinners and you know have a great one all right take care have a good evening bye-bye bye everyone